Ms. Chris and I will um, be here just to answer a, a, a few questions that may have arisen, particularly in light of certain allegations of the, the broadcast of last night. What I'll ask you to do is, in terms of, just in terms of the investigation, that uh, Detective Inspector Chris Jory, spelt J-O-R-Y, he'll be able to answer those questions for you, and uh, within within limits, of course. J-O-R-Y, Chris Jory, Detective Inspector. Um, I'll start off. I'll give you an overview of what's happening today, what's been happening over the past couple of days. But then, obviously, there's the, uh, as I said, there's the allegations that came to light. Via a certain network that uh, Chris will be able to sort of Chris will address, and he'll address some of the investigative aspects of it as well too. So uh, when you're ready, we'll we'll get going if you want. So you all ready? Sorry. All right. Well, just the latest. Um, in a nutshell, what's happening today is there's two two bodies still at the scene. They will be retrieved. This morning, we anticipate before midday. Once that happens, then, then we'll be able to conduct a full and thorough forensic examination. I have said previously, and it has been the case where the forensic examination, the preliminary steps have been able to be undertaken. However, with once, the, uh, once the, the bodies have been removed from the scene, it gives us the opportunity to conduct a full and thorough investigation, forensic examination, as well as uh, with our partners with the Queensland Fire and Rescue Service. As I said, the priority initially was to uh, remove the bodies from the scene, to be able to pass them back to the family with a level of dignity. What the second most pressing point at the moment is to find out what happened, why it happened, where it happened, and then the circumstances either leading up to and post to that event. So that's where the situation stands today. We intend to still be at the scene for a number of days yet uh, until our investigations are completely exhausted together with those of the fire and rescue counterparts and then we'll be in a position to take steps from there. Uh, there will be a number of autopsies conducted over the weekend of the deceased primarily to determine a cause of death but uh, in some instances and having regard to the veracity of the fire some instances it will be for the sake of positive identification. Um, as you heard from the families, they were able to pass their loved ones back to them, uh, knowing full well what happened to them and that they are, in actual fact, their, their loved ones. So that's the steps that we're taking today. Obviously, the, uh, it's not going to be something, the results of how the fire started uh, may not be known for some particular time, but uh, as I said, the coroner is aware of what's going on. We have commenced preparing a report that would be presented to the coroner, but the evidence and the facts in there obviously need to be 100% accurate, and that's what it's all about. Uh, sorry, just say that again. I might be able to canvas that. Yeah. Yeah, I might be able to canvas that in uh, in a statement that I'll make. Uh, and, uh, and what I might do is I'll, I'll start, uh, I'll start from, from the start. Obviously, the early hours of uh, uh, Wednesday morning, uh, uh, Queensland Fire and Rescue Service were called to the address at Slacks Creek. Uh, on arrival, the house was fully involved. Fire and rescue teams uh, managed to enter parts of the dwelling and they identified a number of deceased inside. Shortly thereafter, uh, uh, Queensland Police Service attended the scene, declared a crime scene and uh, cordoned off the area. In the early hours of the morning, uh, 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 senior investigators attended the scene from the Queensland Fire and Rescue Service and also the Queensland Police Service. I briefed the uh, Southern Coroner, Mr John Hutton, at the scene that morning. He had an opportunity to view the scene and obviously this matter is a coronial investigation. Uh, and our investigations will uh, lead towards a determination whether Mr Hutton will hold an inquest in relation to the deaths. The investigations being undertaken in partnership with Queensland Fire and Rescue Service investigators, detectives from the Logan District, CIB and Child Protection and Investigation Units, State Crime Operations Command Homicide Investigation Group and the Arson Squad. And we also are getting assistance from 
our neighbouring police districts uh, who are helping us to locate family members and uh, uh, obtain statements. Shortly after the uh, uh, investigation commenced, a major incident room was, uh, was started at Logan Central Station. We've conducted door knocks of the uh, neighbours and taken statements and obtained versions from them. We've also had the opportunity to speak to the survivors from the family who managed to extricate themselves from the dwelling. The, uh, you can understand uh, and you could see from uh, the, earlier, um, the earlier media conference the emotions of the family are still very raw. Uh, we are working our way through in a uh, most sensitive way possible uh, to glean the uh, information that's needed to help us advance the investigation. The early indications uh, from the scene examination, and uh, it is very, very preliminary, is that uh, we believe the source of the fire was on the lower level of the dwelling, possibly in an office area, now, this is from information obtained from individuals that we've had the opportunity to interview. We understand that, uh, uh, that an individual who was in the downstairs area of the dwelling had returned to that area a short time after doing some work in that area. And on, re uh, on returning to that area after earlier uh, smelling smoke coming up through the floorboards, had seen that area fully engulfed in flame. He's attempted to fight that fire and raise other family members in an effort to get them out of the house. You can understand that uh, uh, the, uh, from the images that you may have had the opportunity to see at the scene, the damage to the dwelling is significant and the fire scene examination is uh, an intricate one. Prior to the forensic examiners and also the fire scene examiners getting into the uh, dwelling uh, to do their uh, examination. Queensland Fire and Rescue Service uh, urban search and rescue teams uh, were used to shore up the premises. Once those bodies are removed, the last two bodies of the uh, loved ones are removed this morning, our forensic examiners will be able to move in with the fire scene examiners and uh, conduct a more thorough examination. That could take several days. We've had uh, gas examiners at the scene. Uh, there are, you, know, you may have seen in some images there were gas bottles uh, uh, along the front left-hand side of the dwelling as you, uh, as you look at it. Uh, there is no indication to suggest that, uh, that those gas bottles blebbied, um, but there is indication that they vented. Now, that... Uh, uh, that is normal in a, uh, in a fire of such intensity where the gas would exp uh, expand and uh, a fail-safe mechanism of the gas bottles is that the uh, gas is allowed to escape in as safe a manner as possible. Over the next uh, several weeks, uh, we will make every effort uh, through our disaster victim identification teams. Uh, we have uh, anti-mortem and post-mortem teams uh, working with the family and the community, uh, obtaining dental records, uh, identifying uh, items of property that uh, loved ones may have come into contact with so that we can obtain fingerprint identification uh, and try to positively identify their loved ones so that uh, uh, the, each family group can be 100% guaranteed that the loved ones that we're returning to them are from their family groups so that they can uh, deal with their loved ones in the traditions of their cultures. The uh, investigation team of detectives have been working uh, significantly around the clock uh, and uh, we will maintain this investigation and uh, prepare a report for the state coroner. Thank you. Did someone, did someone threaten to burn down the house on Facebook? Uh, not on Facebook. Uh, there was a, uh, a threat some weeks ago uh, over a text message on a telephone. An image from that uh, text message had been posted on a Facebook account. We've conducted investigations into that threat. We're keeping a very open mind, but at this stage we are satisfied that the individual who 
sent that text message is not responsible for this event. So we're keeping it open mind, we can't say that it's not sufficient to Well, of course not. The matter goes before the coroner, but all the indications prior to a thorough forensic examination at the scene would indicate that uh, uh, the fire was by accident and the seat of the fire was in a lower level of the dwelling. Can you go into more detail about that threat? Because it wasn't threat that burned down that family time, Yes, it was, but uh, beyond that, no. Uh, we have discounted at this stage that person's involvement. It's quite coincidental, though, isn't it, that a threat's made to burn down that family time and then their time burned Well, the, the threat wasn't made to burn down that family's home. Um, the, uh, it is a large extended family group. That family group live in a number of houses throughout, uh, throughout the district. There was no specific threat to burn down that, that house. The threat was directed towards a member of that family. We've spoken to uh, a person associated directly uh, from that family group and they hold no, no fears that that person is responsible and we have spoken to that person as well as part of our investigation. Uh, the, the family uh, have been uh, uh, helping us as best they can. Um, you can understand that the uh, family interacts with the community. Uh, there is a, uh, some information that was provided to the major incident room that uh, a uh, person in the community was unhappy with one of the uh, family members. However, there was no, never any direct threat made to that person uh, in any way, shape or form. No. Uh, the, uh, the fire was that intense that on the information that I've received that the gas bottles were, uh, were venting at one stage and they were venting away from the house towards the neighbouring house on the left hand side. There is some fire damage to that house on the left hand side. Now I don't know whether that's as a result of the uh, uh, the gas venting and that being a flame, or whether it's from the intense heat. But I can I can tell you that the the heat and the destructive nature of that fire was significant. There's uh, look, I'm not a uh, I'm not a forensic expert. However, from my uh, from my limited uh, limited knowledge, uh, obviously the uh, the fire feeds off fuel sources. Those fuel sources include uh, what the dwelling is uh, constructed of. Uh, any fuel source could include uh, papers, uh, other furniture, mm. curtaining that are in and around uh, the area where the seat of the fire is, and oxygen itself. Yes. No. Yeah, and uh, we've spoken to the gas scene examiners and uh, during the venting process there would be a sound of, uh, of, of uh, a banging sound as they vent uh, and that could also be uh, glass in the house exploding uh, due to the intense heat as well. Uh, from the intense fire and the heat, brickwork, like block work, has, uh, uh, has, has cracked and in some areas shattered as well. Well, uh, look, the, the gas bottles were intact uh, and mm. uh, they're all connected correctly to the dwelling. Can you elaborate more on what those things were the fire and Well, obviously it was, it was uh, one of the survivors uh, from the family group had been working in that area just prior to the, to the fire around midnight and uh, shortly thereafter he had uh, gone upstairs uh, seen the smoke coming through the floorboards and uh, returned, uh, uh, returned and saw that room well of light. That person was Tao Tapa. That's right. Yeah. No. Um, the, 
the level of destruction is, is such that uh, they will not be able to determine. We're relying on eyewitness accounts and uh, the information mm -hmm. uh, to date is that uh, uh, no smoke alarm was heard. Uh, we're unable to say if there's one installed. Uh, house was owned. owned yeah. Yes. Uh, look, the, there was a car at the front of the dwelling that was fully engulfed in flame uh, as the uh, flames licked out from uh, the underside of the house. Um, and uh, uh, yes, it could be from that. There is slight damage to a number of uh, vehicles that were parked at the rear of the house and another at the side. Uh, that is possible. Uh, but again, until that uh, thorough examination is done, uh, the loud cracking and, uh, and explosions could be a, a, a number of things inside the house. Uh, uh, you know, could, could, uh, uh, could be the glass, as I said, or brickwork, uh, or block work exploding as well. He attempted to fight the flames with a hose um, and uh, he was beaten back, but at the same time he was trying to rouse family members uh, to get out of the house. That's right. Mm. I, I, think, uh, I think maybe, uh, and again, well, I'm not a cultural expert either, uh, but culturally, because of the position uh, these men hold in their families, uh, the concerns are the fam of, the fam of the family is that uh, the reports uh, through the media may paint them in a picture less favourably. Um, and I've got nothing to indicate from my investigations that, uh, uh, that their deeds that night were any anything more than heroic. I think it'd be best just classified as a, as a father trying to protect his family. I think if you put it in the basic terms, it's exactly what he's done. It could be the why me thing. Uh, think of it yourselves. Uh, yeah, you know, you're, you're the, uh, one of the sole survivors of your family group. Uh, think of that. There's, there's, there hasn't, and, uh, and in fact, uh, the three-year-old hasn't been positively identified. Uh, that is going to be a uh, long process through the uh, uh, anti-mortem and post-mortem teams, and uh, those post-mortem examinations would also include uh, forensic odontologists, um, uh, DNA collection, fingerprint examinations, and a number of other uh, examinations as well to determine age and sex of uh, the deceased which may help us, help us identify them. That's a, uh, that's a resource issue, uh, and uh, they do come to us with a level of expertise that just help us in those investigations. It, um, as I said from the outset, um, Traditionally, when, when these events, when any, any tragedy or anything of this particular scale or a lesser scale to that matter, when it occurs, it's, um, it's been my experience, and I, I think I can speak on behalf of the Detective Inspector Jury as well, it's been our experience that there's something needs to be done so you get in and do it. Um, it's, you do see some horrible things, you do see some shocking images and some of that, it, well, it never goes away from you, but the simple fact of the matter is that we're trained to do a certain job we go where we do that job, we do it objectively, and I'm speaking on behalf of Queensland Fire and Rescue and also Ambulance as well too. Um, if, if things happen, if you find you're not coping, we've got a vast array of resources, as I said, from our human services officers, peer support officers, chaplaincy services, aspects of early intervention programs if they're actually required, but right from the outset, right up until the time is, is completed to a standard that uh, doesn't require as many resources, it's simply a case of get in and do the job, let's do it properly and let's do it objectively. That's right. Um, uh, 
uh, three, uh, three bodies were uh, uh, located and uh, removed from the house uh, early in the front right-hand bedroom uh, upstairs, one in the upstairs right-hand rear bedroom, and we uh, have seven bodies in the lower level of the building believed to have, uh, have fallen through the floor. Yes. Mm. Yes. Uh, uh, sorry, left rear of the house, as you're looking at it. Was there a line of perspective when Clarkson running the family? Was there any sort of noise at the room? Clarkson running the floor? Uh, it's too early for us to say at this stage. Uh, uh, it's been described to us by Jeremiah that uh, the heat was intense, that the smoke was thick, he couldn't see the hand in front of his face prior to trying to uh, get out the back door. He does say that uh, he had been talking to the family group, so he had gathered the group to an area which uh, he thought was safe for the family in, in, in an effort to gather everyone to get them out, uh, but sadly that wasn't so. Uh, slightly behind that area. No internal stairs, so uh, stairs to the front and and rear, and uh, you know you, if you can imagine from the uh, intense heat, that fire seeking seeking fuel, air, oxygen, it uh, uh, if if the source was in that room that we believe at this stage, uh, that flame licking the under floor of the upper level, and seeking out fuel, being the uh, floorboards and the uh, uh, and the support beams, and then uh, coming to the outside of the house uh, from images that I've seen from photographs that were captured at the time, uh, the flames totally engulfed uh, the front and rear verandas as well of the dwelling. So uh, nobody would have been able to get out of those areas. That's right. Well, there's two bed towards the left rear of the house is two bedrooms. Right at that, and that's right at the back on the left. Is you looking from, from the, the front? front yeah. On the left hand side at the back is two bedrooms. And then moving <coughs> towards the front of the house on that left side upstairs is a kitchen and a lounge area. It's in that uh, lounge area which the flooring has collapsed. Uh, sorry, I don't understand. I don't know where the dividing wall is, uh, but uh, that back left rear area of the house here, which was well engulfed, is severely damaged as well. Uh, but uh, as you can appreciate, uh, the whole dwelling's severely damaged. Sorry, Jeremiah. Uh, the lounge area, which is near that, uh, near that uh, which is where the collapse is. Yes. Uh, that's an, that's something that we need to clarify yeah. with him. We're just not 100% sure there. So this is the hard part about it. You know, he's he's still carrying a lot of grief and. Um, Obviously, a statement that we're going to need to take from him as from the other two witnesses as well is going to be quite intrinsic, very in depth, and will take some considerable period of time. So he's got to get a, you know, deal with the grief he's got at the moment, and then we're able to sort of step in after that and be perhaps a little bit more clinical if we could and to, to tie him down. That's just a, that's the process we have to take. It's as simple as that. Sorry? That's right. Yeah. That's right. We we do have, as you've heard, uh, uh, I've given you a fair bit of information. We've got versions from the three survivors and also neighbours. Um, but uh, in a fire scene investigation, we need to go into a lot more in depth um, with those survivors, and uh, that assists the fire examiners and then also the state coroner in making determinations. 
so we've, uh, uh, we've got a long way to go with the family. Uh, we've been briefing the family groups at the scene on a daily basis on the progress and direction of the investigation. Uh, it's a uh, long, drawn-out, painstaking process, as you've heard. And uh, if I could just leave you with one message, that at this stage of the investigation, there is nothing to suggest foul play. We are continuing our investigations with an open mind, as we should. We're preparing a report for the coroner, and that uh, report uh, may lead to a uh, determination of an inquest or not. Uh, we're having discussions with uh, the family group, but uh, uh, not directly. There's still post-mortem work to be done, and uh, they'll be dealing with counsellors at the John Tong Centre uh, who are attached to Queensland Health, and uh, a timeline will be uh, provided to the family once the uh, post-mortem work is done, identification is complete, and the bodies can be released. Victim identification could take uh, weeks. Upstairs, yes. 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 That's right. Yeah. We do have a version from Missy. It's, uh, it's consistent with that provided by uh, the other survivors. Um, I, I don't have uh, his version uh, to hand in depth, un unfortunately, but uh, uh, you know, I can say that it is consistent. He's managed to uh, 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 jump out of a window, I believe, at the front of the house from memory. Uh, it's, it's a process that we're working through with the family. You saw the rawness of their emotion. Uh, it's, uh, uh, we're chipping away at that. Uh, and uh, when they've had enough, we uh, will come back to them uh, a little bit later. And we've told them that. Uh, in the end, he had, uh, yes, he had uh, like minor burns, but uh, uh, he, uh, uh, he was transported to the PA hospital. Oh, he, he was in and out, yes, uh, a couple of times. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks very much. Ron.